Welcome, math enthusiasts, to the ultimate math Olympiad journey. I hope you enjoyed the explanation for the first question, and I look forward to going through the second one and the remaining questions. For those who have just joined us today, get ready to embark on a thrilling adventure as we dive deep into the world of the British Mathematical Olympiad BMO test papers. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you'd never miss a mind-bending moment. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this right away. So problem two, a sequence of positive integers a n begins with a1 equals a and a2 equals b for positive integers a and b. Subsequent terms in the sequence satisfy the following two rules for all positive integers. That's a2n plus 1 equals a2n times a2n minus 1, a2n plus 2. And a2n plus 2 is equal to a2n plus 1 plus 4. Exactly m of the numbers a1, a2, a3, all the way up to a2022 are square numbers. So what is the maximum possible value of m? And note that m depends on a and b. So the maximum is over all possible choices of a and b. So it's quite hard to see what we're formally going to do here. So what I'm going to start off with is by choosing some values of a and b and working out some terms of the sequence. I'm also worried that the multiplication is going to cause terms to get large really quickly. So I'm going to start by taking a and b as as small as I can. So we'll take that as 1 and 1. Now, the rule says that the odd terms of the sequence, like a3, are formed by multiplying the previous two terms. So a3 will also be 1 as 1 times 1 is 1. Well, the even terms of the sequence are formed by adding 4 to the previous term. So a4 will be 1 plus 4, which is 5. So next, we multiply the two previous terms. 1 times 5 is 5, and we add 4 to get 9. And then multiply 5 and 9 to get 45. And then we add 4 to 45 to get 49. Now, I really don't want to multiply 45 and 49. So for now, I'll just put a dot, dot, dot. And so now we can think about it if I have to later. So I can see at once that there's quite a few squares here. So we know 1 is a square. We've got 9, which is a square, and 49, which is a square. So what is that? That is term 1, term 6, and term 8. And now I'm going to calculate another example with a different a and b and see what happens. And I still want to keep them small, so now I'll start with 1 and 2. So now I get that 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16, and 12 times 16 is 192, and 192 plus 4 is 196. And I really don't want to multiply 192 and 196, so I'll stop for now. And again for now, there are some squares. We've got one at the beginning, we've got 16, and then 196. Again, so that's 14 squared. So one thing we can notice is that in both cases, the sixth and the eighth terms are both squares. And it might be worth trying to prove that, that it always happens, and to prove that even numbers after that are squares. And that will give us an indication as to what happens through the remaining parts of the sequence. So if I'm going to prove that the sixth term is a square, it's helpful to start thinking about the third and the fourth term. So of course, the third term is found by multiplying a and b. So let's go ahead and use k to present it. So the fourth term is going to be obtained by taking that value and then adding 4 to it. And then the fifth term is obtained by multiplying those two together. So I get k and k plus 4, and you multiply that together. And the sixth term is obtained by adding 4 to that. So you get k times k plus 4 plus 4. Now this has become a bit complicated, but we can go ahead and simplify this. So that equals to k squared plus 4k plus 4, and happily that can also be factorized as k plus 2 squared. And that in fact proves that every term and every even term after the sixth term is a square, because the third and the fourth term in this format, given that the sixth term is a square, 
but the fifth and the sixth term is also going to be of this format, giving the eighth term a square, and the seventh and eighth term in this format will then give you the tenth term a square. So what we've done here is that we've proved that starting with the sixth term, every even term of the sequence is a square. And I guess we also need to know that the odd terms are also going to be non-squares. So what we need to do is to think about the fact that they are four less than the term after. So if we take a look at the terms really quickly that are square numbers, that's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. After 4, the gap between the consecutive squares are more than 4. So after 1 and 4, the difference gets bigger. And the gap between 4 and 0 is 4, but 0 is not positive, so that cannot occur in the sequence. So there are no gaps of 4 between positive squares. And that means that given the odd terms of 4 less than a square, they can't themselves be squares. So we've now worked out that the 6th, 8th, 10th terms are all squares, whereas the 5th, 7th and 9th terms and so on are not squares. So all that remains is to think about what happens with the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th terms. So let's think about the first four terms now. I'm going to take a, b, a times b, and a times b plus 4. Now, as we've said, there's no positive squares that differ by 4, so we can't have a, b, and a, b plus 4 as both squares. So we can see at once that there can be at most three squares in the sequence. So if a was a square and b was a square, and one of a times b and a times b plus 4 was a square, we'd have three, and that would be the most that we could get out of these four terms. But of course, if a is a square and b is a square, then a times b is automatically a square, and a times b plus four would automatically not be a square. So what we've got is that we can get three terms of the first four squares by taking the first two to be squares. And that completely answers the question. So the maximum number of squares possible in the sequence consists of three of the first four plus half of the remaining 2018 terms. And to reiterate, the reason we've got 2018 is because we've worked with the first four terms. So that's going to be three plus the half of 2018, which is going to be 1009, and that gives us 1012. And that is the max possible number of squares. And with that in mind, that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you for joining us once again on this Math Olympiad journey. We hope you enjoyed exploring the fascinating world of the BMO past papers. So if you want more math challenges and insights, don't forget to watch the next video, which will be focused on problem three. Until next time, keep shining in the world of mathematics. See you soon, team.